All right, I got my little portable audio recorder set up. Do a clap for audio sync. By the way, for those of you who wonder, how do you sync the audio if the clap is not visible on camera? I will leave that riddle to you big brains who like to correct me and say, Lewis, you don't know how to sync audio. In spite of the fact that every single one of my videos that does that has perfect audio sync, I will let you big brains tell me how I do it. So, let me just get my lights on here. You can see this bike has some pretty sweet, sweet lights. Like this is a lot of lighting I got on here and it's beautiful. I have it all pointing downwards, not too forwards, so that it does. Not only is it an insane amount of lighting, but it doesn't blind the person in front of me at all. Which, it took a while to find lights that are set up like this. But it's really nice because I got my far ahead lights for seeing far in front of me, and I also got my pothole lights so that I can get like a little bit of notice. I have that, and just enough for some last minute notice when I'm about to get owned by a giant pothole. This is turning green over here. So there were a lot of people in New York City today. When I was going through FIT, it was packed. Uh, going up 6th Avenue or going down Broadway earlier today, I did a live stream on my live channel. It was absolutely packed. Like, it hasn't been like that for two years. The commercial real estate is dead, but it really does make me wonder if, you know, if all these offices are are vacant and all of these storefronts are vacant, then what are all the people that are walking around doing? It looked to me like a lot of students. I think a lot of it is students returning to schools or trade schools and that making up a lot of the business. It was really weird in that last video that I did on the weekend of going through the Lower East Side. I got recognized like four times. That is so weird and so awkward. I'm not used to that at all. It's just so strange because I don't it's not like I went out and socialized here for 13 years or for 32 years that I lived here, and now everybody knows who I am. I spent, you know, the last 10 years sitting in my little office, soldering, experimenting, memorizing screen model numbers, figuring out the difference between an LP133 WX2 TLC1 and an LP133 WX2 TLG1 is. The G1 is for the A1342 and has slightly better black levels than the TLC one, which is for the A1278 MacBook, not the Pro, the A202327 board from early 2008 with a removable battery. <laughs> yeah, I still remember this garbage. Uh, someday that's going to get flushed from my head. I look forward to the day where I remember none of this. Because it'll mean by then that my head is probably actually filled with something important or worthwhile. Someday when my head is filled with worthwhile material, I imagine that all of that garbage will just fade away. I hope. I can only hope. Yeah, there's not so many people out now because it's, uh, it's a Thursday night. It's 9.43 p.m. It's not Friday. It's Thursday. Although in the East Village, you'll see that people start to try to get their partying on earlier on Thursday in preparation for Friday. It's kind of weird because it, it, I have this weird feeling with everybody leaving, and this is so irrational, and feel free to tell me that it's such, but it's just what goes through my head, that the idea of kind of leaving now right as everything is coming back from the city, I kind of feel like I'm being left out of a party. But the reason that, that is as irrational as it is, and my God, that those two people are wasted. The reason that that is so irrational is I never took part in this shit to begin with. Like, even pre-COVID, I moved to that store that was in the East Village, which is what I call Never Never Land, where people just party and go to, you know, they go to bars and they go to, you know, the places to get wasted and restaurants and other places to get wasted all day. Uh, I didn't do that when I was there. You know, if I ever did get wasted, it would just be me drinking Jägermeister while I'm trying to figure out a motherboard issue in my office. Or, you know, maybe sometimes I'd go to Mazetto, but I, that place is closed, sadly. But I'd always go there by myself. And I, I would go there to clear my head. I'd show up there with, uh, with some news to read. I'd get my truffled gnocchi, which they had the best truffled gnocchi. And they had this particular spicy feta spread that it was to die for. That I, I have not been able to find anything comparable to Mazetto spicy feta and like, since, since they closed down. I'm pissed off at that. That and Lucha Lucha. The only thing that would make me excited about visiting an afterlife is if all the restaurants that died also go to the same afterlife that you go to. That's the one thing that would make me excited about my life coming to an end. Being able to get lunch at Lucha Lucha and dinner at Mazetto every single day. 
but I didn't actually use any of it. So it's really kind of irrational to have that thought process now. Like, I don't go out and party, and I don't even know what the fuck you're supposed to do. Like, I go to a bar, and everybody else is yelling. You can't hear what the hell anybody is saying anyway, so I don't know how the, what the, what the f hell the, they're even talking about, because you can't hear the person next to you. It's not for the music, because they always have horrible speakers, and they're playing horrible music in contrast to being able to listen to some nice Teals or Vandersteens at home or in the office. It's not for the intellectual stimulation. And I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to pick up women at a bar. It's no fun. It's like you, you don't know, you can't even have a conversation. There's no, uh, there's no situation whereby you just go up to a random person and are like, hey, how's it going? Where that goes well. Maybe that's just an Asperger's thing. But. So I don't understand the appeal of it. So this thing that I would be supposedly missing out on is something that I never actually used when I was here. Although I suppose maybe it's the idea that if I were to morph into a different human being that I could use this that makes it so tantalizing. Something that, would, uh, that I'd be sad to leave behind. I don't know. Who the fuck knows? People are irrational, and most certainly I'm one of them. I am as irrational as you can imagine. Anybody who takes a look at my stock purchase history would be able to tell you that very quickly. This little restaurant is open again, nice to see. It's so nuts that like an actual shutdown of the economy happens and commercial real estate was still, that, that, that bubble genuinely never burst. It never really had a real popping. It had a fear of deflating. Not even deflating, it had a fear of deflating. See, see what that guy did right there? See what that guy in the arrow did? That's what I talk about, by the way, when I talk about intelligent jaywalking. So you have some people that will look both ways before they go through a red light. And then you have some people that just say, fuck it. YOLO, or in their case, maybe YOLS, you only live zero, and they just go straight through the entire thing while the car is actually moving very close to them. I don't, yeah, I, I don't test, I don't tempt fate like that. Because, I mean, I could probably get away with it a couple of times, especially with the torque I got on this in Gear 1. The torque that this has on Gear 1, ah, oh, boom. But, uh, you know, one day I'm going to miscalculate that. And the day I miscalculate that is... Uh, the day we test just how strong Repair Preservation Group Action Fund is at lobbying when it has no, no executive director. Not for me. Not for me. I've always liked riding down this block because it has this very, very wide feel to it that I appreciate. But yeah, it drives me nuts that this commercial real estate bubble, it never even, it didn't pop, it didn't even deflate. It, di it just, there was a fear of it deflating that sat in the air. It was an awkward silence in the room, but that awkward silence went away without it ever deflating, without it ever popping. That blows my mind, that blows my mind, because I was really hoping for the city to be able to have a renaissance. <laughs> because when people come back, maybe it would be a new city, a better city, a city with different types of businesses, and. No hope at all. No hope at all. One place I viewed the other day, and the, the guy was actually kind of kind of pissed. He said, I don't want to be in the video. So I said, okay, you won't be in the video. I censored him out completely. You can't see him. You can't even tell what his voice is because I put us through some vocoder shit. And he's like, eh, I don't like that my space is in the video. And Steve's like, okay, fine. You know what? Just private the video. Make him happy. But like, just that mentality of, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I know that I advertise the place as one size, and it's actually 50% the size when you show up. It's not really greatly maintained, but it is what it is. You know, need to collect my money for not actually providing any value. Ah, it just makes me sick that that entire, that entire ecosystem is going to come roaring back. A big part of it is, like, it's not even wanting to see New York fail. It's wanting, because, like, I want to see New York succeed. But in order for New York to succeed, it's kind of like, have a listen. 
If a family member that you, you know has cancer, you're rooting for some cells inside of, that, inside of your uncle's body to die. You're not rooting for his brain cells to die. You're not rooting for his muscle cells to die. You're rooting for the cancer cells to die. That doesn't mean you're rooting for your uncle to die, you know? But the cancer cells have to die in order for your uncle to recover. And I've always kind of seen a group of people that make money without adding value. To be clear, I'm not talking about the people that build the buildings, the people that refurbish old structures and make them amazing again and all that, but like people that I'm going to buy this on leverage and then I'm going to resell it to someone else at an insane markup based on a, based on an, a lie, based on my inability to use a tape measure kind of thing. I've just, I've never had respect for that as an industry. And I've never had respect for that as a profession. And so much of that needs a humbling before there can be a true renaissance in the city. And there is a lot of rooms for there to be a real renaissance in the city. You got a lot of smart people. You got a lot of people that are willing to, willing to do, you know, 14, 16 hours a day of work to pursue their dream. And I saw a lot of crap in the comments saying, who should have to work 12 hours a day? That's dystopian. It's like, dude, we're not talking about you. We're not talking about you. We're talking about people that are willing to make that choice to live a dream. Did I have to work 12, 16 hours a day? No, I could have stayed at Modell Sporting Goods. I'm sure that, you know, maybe I had to work my way, maybe I would have worked my way up to assistant store manager by now. Been making like, you know, 18 or $21 an hour, living in the same shithole apartment. You know, know what my salary is, know what my benefits are or aren't. I wanted to do something else. You know, not everybody is going to want to do something else with their life. Not everybody is going to want to take a more risky path uh, in the pursuit of a, an eccentric dream, but I did. And, but like, the thing that has always been beautiful about this place is that there is all of that opportunity around you. You know, you can never truly say that if your idea fails that it was the place that made it fail here. Because you got so many, so much opportunity, so many people, so much wealth, so much, uh, you know, so many educational resources, so many people from all around the world pursuing whatever they're pursuing here. That it's really, you know, if your idea fails in Custer, South Dakota, it might have just failed because of Custer, South Dakota. But if your idea fails here, there's a good chance that it failed because of you. Maybe your idea sucked, or maybe you just didn't put the effort in. But it's really hard when you have just the amount of people and wealth and everything around you here for you to be able to say with certainty that your idea failed because of the area. Now, if your idea failed, it was the idea of you. I like that about this place. And there was, there's so much potential, so much potential for there to be a genuine renaissance in this city. But for that to happen, I have to have that bubble pop. And I don't see that... I don't think that bubble's gonna pop, to be honest with you. I think that thing's just gonna be floating there with that awkward silence in the air for a long time. You know, I saw someone in my comments that said that they work in New York State commercial real estate, New York City commercial real estate, and they're signing deals left and right, so perhaps I'm missing where they are, but everything that I see around me is retail for lease, retail for lease, retail for lease, closed. Which is hard for me to comprehend because you have a lot of people that are back here. So again, where are they shopping? What are they doing? What are they returning for? How are you? I can do 300 miles in a single charge. I could make it from here to... Are the battery cases made out of aluminum or...? No, I think it's plastic. Every battery has an individual fuse on it too. And it's Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I do. What's your name? Nice to meet you, man. He has a giant battery on his bike, but his is actually mounted properly in the middle, not all the way in the back. So he has a proper center of gravity on his, on his device. I like that. He has the giant triangle battery in the middle, and he also has a proper rear suspension. This bike wasn't made for that. His, like, his bike is, could definitely go faster than mine and would maneuver better but he can't carry a passenger or a heavy load. I can carry a passenger. I don't want to say heavy load there because Eric is going to get offended. But <laughs> I could carry either a passenger or a heavy load and it's just fine. I could load up 300 pounds in the back and carry it around the city and up a hill if I wanted to on this. I got incredible torque at gear one. Like, gear one on this bike, 
I top out around 13 or 14 miles an hour, but I did a lot of messing with it with the, in the phase with the, that backdoor software that you, that you can use on the phase runner motor controller. A lot of messing with it, but I mean, I have a really nice acceleration, a really nice top speed, but on gear one, I also have this set up where it, top speed is around 13 miles an hour, but it, it fucks. It absolutely fucks. It can pull shit. I should be doing what that guy's doing. And that guy's doing. Hey, what the hell's wrong with me? Why am I not waiting up there like I'm supposed to? I should honk at everybody too. That's what that, that's what you do, the popular kids do nowadays. I think that's what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to wait in the crosswalk and you're supposed to honk at everybody. That's what all the cool kids do. GTFO mofo. So I managed to get recognized by one guy, the guy with the triangle battery in the bike. You know what's interesting? I don't think I've gone home a single time in, over the past month where somebody did not recognize me in New York City. Like, there hasn't been a single time in the last month that I've gone home on this bicycle where someone didn't say, hey, I've seen you on you. It's probably that fucking great video. I bet it's the damn great. That stupid grade is now my second highest viewed video. That was a shit post. That was a shit post. How the fuck is a shit post my second highest viewed video? Are you gonna let me in? Uh, I hope so. I'm, I'm dead. All right, cool. He let me in. That was very kind of him. I appreciate that. Every time I see TLC license plates, I assume that they're not gonna let me in. They drive like cutting me off, like their life dep is dependent on it. All right. This is no 360 camera, so you don't get to enjoy that part of the adventure, unfortunately. But it's a, uh, yeah. When the road closes in at a certain point, it's usually a mystery as to whether or not they'll let me in just because I put up my left arm as a turn signal and have my lights on. Sometimes they do when it's very appreciated. Sometimes they don't and, well. Bodies heal themselves, right? <laughs> right? Uh. Okay, can I turn here? I don't think so. Eh. Okay, here we go. No, let me go. Vom! I was on gear two, so I missed out on some torque there. Lame. What? What is this? I can't tell if that was a homeless guy or just some somebody standing in the middle of a what was going to become the bike lane. Oh well. I avoided him successfully. Uh, yes. Uh oh. There are lefts to be made here. Is a Mercedes E350 a good car? I see a lot of those. I see a lot of the like two, 2014 through 2018 year E350s. It seems like one of the one of the, very definitely a very popular car in New York City. I'm very curious. What makes that car so in demand? I see it everywhere. The E350, that specific model from Mercedes. That car sounds like it has a ripped subwoofer to my right. I don't think you can have a truly good subwoofer system when you only have 12 volts available. Change my mind. It sounds like a fart. 
You know, Sue Research, Dr. Posses, who had a car subwoofer on his website. I always wanted to try it. I, I really do respect Dr. Sue's subwoofers. He makes some quality stuff. I think his site, I wonder if his site, I bet he's the type of dude that would still have his site down in that like 1999 Yahoo stores format. He's the type of dude that was never going to update. He's like, I know that I make the best subwoofers in the world. I know they measure the best. I know they are the best. I know they have the best group delay. I know they sound the best. I don't give a fuck what my website looks like. I don't give a fuck about marketing. I have the best. I sell the best. I'm going to use my Yahoo store from 1997. And fuck SSL. <laughs> Very kind of curious. I got to check that when I get home. Dr. Sue. Some of the best subwoofers you'll get. I think SVS ripped off a lot of their shit. SVS had much better marketing than Sue. But I was always a Sue fan over SVS. That was a holy war back in the day. You have a lot of holy wars. You have like, you know, iPhone versus Android. You have Chevy versus Ford. You have green energy versus rolling coal on people with your F-350 diesel. Uh, you know, you have like the, like Marjorie Taylor Green versus AOC shit. Uh, and then you also happen to have, what? Well, that was a really strange turn that that gentleman just made as he had to know that people are using this entrance to get on the bridge. Anyway, yeah, and then you have Sue versus SVS. Kind of like Rocket versus Axiom, except I think Rocket, AV123, wound up being a scam company. Right, let's see how this thing pulls its way up the bridge. I really should get out of gear one because I get no speed with gear one. Gear one is just purely torque. Get me up a hill with a wide load on the back. Or allow me to accelerate out of, out of danger. All right, what speed can we get going over the bridge here? Considerably better than that motor scooter on the right of me. Motor is at 36 Celsius. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I wish I could have motor temperature on the screen. This would be so much fun. Motor temperature 38. Nothing to worry about here. This motor is properly heat synced. It's not a MacBook. It's not a new MacBook Air. We're good. I have faith in and believe in this motor. If I had more balls, I could do a dangerous pass over here, but I would prefer not to. Because people typically make wide turns around here when they're going fast down the bridge. And I mean, I could do it, maybe, but never want to risk that shit. All right. All right. Motor is 40 Celsius. What do... Oh. Ho, 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 ho. All right. That guy has no lights on. We will wait for him. No lights, no reflectors. That is no good. Not very, not very safe. If no lights, at least reflectors. says the guy carrying 45 pounds of lithium with him on a fucking bridge. Uh, listen to me talk about safety. Uh, yeah, this bridge is actually con more crowded now than usual. I remember being able to have fun on here during the pandemic, and now it's kind of, uh, how do I put it, really pretty, pretty crowded, pretty full. This is a pretty full bridge. I can't even get my motor above 43 Celsius anymore. Uh, dare I say it, my motor is actually cooling off. I'm using uh, the cycle analyst with my phase runner and I have the probe plugged into my motor's unused tab and it tells me the, well, the, the unused pin on the, on the hall sensor. The unused pin on the hall sensor thing is actually for temperature on the BBS HD. I think it's the purple wire. I'm pretty sure it's the purple. It's either the purple or the white. I think it's the purple one. But I can see temperature. This is too much power for one person. Oh, the power. I feel like Tim the Toolman Taylor before he got canceled for being a Republican. Ha, 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 ha.
ha. Remember that in Home Improvement? Ha, ha, ha. That show is funny as fuck. Then he came out as being, like, right, as being Republican, and the world forgot he existed. I didn't forget about you, Tim. Your, sh your show was hysterical. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wonder if that dude would come out supporting Right to Repair. That would be pretty amazing. Since he ran an entire show about home improvement that the country knew and loved. It would also really get across to that particular age demographic. Because the people who watched that show and enjoyed it when I was a kid were in their 40s. So they're probably in their 60s now. So I'd be reaching a demographic of people who just don't know about my YouTube channel because they don't watch it on YouTube. For, for the most part, like, man, getting people like him to support Right to Repair will be something else. You know, always looking for a way to angle, get an angle in with a new demographic. Okay, nobody to my left here. Ah, uh, that torque around the turns is beautiful. I love that torque around the turns in gear one. Yes, yeah, so there's an electric bike in front of me, so I can give you an idea of what I mean when I talk about gear one torque after adjusting everything in this motor. It's absolutely fucking crazy. So this is an arrow to my left. And watch this. Three, two. Eat my dust, baby. Ho, ho. It's too much power for one dude. It really is. Too much power for one dude. It's just the right amount of power when Eric is on the back of it. When Eric is in the back of it, there's only so crazy I can be because I have an additional 110 or 120 pounds on there. And when I have the additional 110, 120 pounds, I, I, I kind of I lose a little bit of the fun inherent in that acceleration. But this thing is, I've, I've tested it before. It is faster than that little Revel scooter in front of me. Those things are really popular. I think they'll something like 10 or 15 cents a minute or a dollar a minute or something like that. So I've never tried one of them. I don't want to pay that. I don't want to pay by the minute for anything. Fuck that. Uh, but yeah, somebody brought one of them by the store and I tried it out <laughs> back during the pandemic when the streets were empty enough that you could actually have a little bit of fun. And yeah, that shit is slow. Like, it even loses to this bike, which is admittedly not my fastest because this is a heavier bicycle and it's hauling five fucking batteries on it. I built this for fun so that I could try doing a long trip to, like, if I wanted to take a trip on a bicycle far away to, I don't know, Pennsylvania or something. I could visit Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, or Doylestown, or, you know, someplace in the middle of nowhere, like Clark Summit or Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Bear, Delaware. Let me in. Thank you. Bumper bully. You know if you keep that shit on there when you're driving, the debris that kicks up from the road that gets between the bumper bully and your bumper winds up rubbing against the bumper bully in your bumper and then you actually wind up scratching your bumper so that shit's it's really bad to keep that thing out all the time it makes no no sense at all because you're actually going to fuck up your bumper way worse than bro that's why i like my disc brakes that was a bro moment right there that's called reflexes Thank you very much, Pass Lewis, for putting dual 180 millimeter disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes on this instead of 140 or 160 millimeter rotors. I think the front on this is actually a 203. That came in very handy right there. Ahem. It was getting excited. Okay. And driving in New York City is like something else. So right now we are, what is this, like 10 o'clock or something? 
Yeah, it's, like a, yeah, it's 10 after 10 on a Thursday. It's not even a Friday or Saturday night. It's 10 after 10. On a, can you imagine this shit? Can you imagine it's like it's almost 1030 and you're driving home and it's standstill traffic? Like, look at this. Look at this. This is horrible. I feel bad for all the people that are sitting in these horribly slow-moving freaking tanks just stuck there, knowing that they're moving at one mile an hour, but they only get to move at one mile an hour for three or four minutes at a time before this fucking light turns red again, and then they're stuck not moving at all. And then the light turns, and they sit there for about a minute not moving, and then for three seconds they get to move at two miles an hour, and they get all excited before the light turns red again. Ah, uh, traffic. Traffic, it's it's a beautiful thing. You know, any place else that I go, it has to either A, be a place where I can get around by buffang, or B, none of this bullshit with the traffic. None of this bullshit. Buffangable or lack of traffic? But this is nuts. Absolutely nutso. I don't know why people choose to drive around New York City. Uh, the only reason that I got a car is because I would like to have the option to travel the country in a free-range way where, you know, I don't have to make my plans around bus schedules and I can, like, kind of independently roam around as I please. You know, I really do want that ability to roam around as I please and check out different areas when I want, how I want, with all the stuff that I need on me at the time. But uh, for getting around the city... Like, I would take a, I would take some cheap ass, you know, used, half broken $500 electric bicycle over a Mercedes S550 any day. Because the car experience in New York City is, is, is just completely punishing. It's horrible. I can't believe people pay for this shit. It's like beyond me. You couldn't pay me for this fucking shit experience. And then there's finding parking. I mean, let's... Okay, so I, it takes me 20 minutes to get where I need to go. If you have a car, it's taking... You know it's taking you 50 minutes to an hour. You, you, no, 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 no. Nice. No truck. No truck. It's going to take 50 minutes to an hour, and then you're going to have to spend 20 minutes to a half hour to find parking. Or you could spend 50 bucks at a parking lot to park. Or you could pay six or $700 a month for a parking lot at that particular location. But God help you if you actually want to go to another section of the city. You got to walk there, take a train anyway, at which point, why the fuck are you paying for a car? Or pay for a parking spot over there, park illegally and get a ticket, risk a ticket, which you'll probably get. Always something. so much nicer to just have this. You can park this bike anywhere that a dog can take a piss. Anywhere. Or I guess not anywhere because the NYPD started, if you stop the bike at a, if you lock your bike to a stop sign or something, they, they, they uh, go ahead and they, they steal it. Well, I guess they, they quote confiscate it because it's illegal to do that. But it's the only practical way that you can really get around in the city and have any sort of feeling of independence about you. Because if you have a car, you feel like you're in hell. If you're taking the trains everywhere, I mean, that, that's another form of hell. I did that shit for... Yeah, I took, I took the train for like 18 years. Like, fuck that. I'm never... I'm done. I took the train and the buses and the ferry, Staten Island ferry, everything. The express buses, normal buses, subway, Metro North. Like, you know. Waiting for shit to show, arrive that never arrives. Having... You know, it's just... It, it gets old after a while, and screw that. This is the best way to get around the city. It really is. By far. It's also the most fun. It's not just that it's the most efficient, and I think... It's the most fun. Or like, see, when you get some shit like this. Like, if you're in a car, you're in hell right now. You're punching air. You're punching air if you're in a car and you need it to go forward right now. Because there is, uh, there's a bus, there's a fire truck, there's a U-Haul, there's a police van. There's all sorts of shit here. 
who the, and now they're honking at each other and they're probably mad and it's like you know what I don't have to care about any of that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna go over here and now I am gone and these guys are probably gonna be stuck waiting here for the next 15 minutes And there we go. Well, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now.